Welcome back, everyone. Um, this is Pino Trogo again from San Francisco State University. It's uh, Thursday, April 23rd, 2020, and this is the introduction to drawing for designers class at San Francisco State in the School of Design. And today we're going to do a hand, freehand version of a two-point perspective with a low horizon line. And I'll uh, review uh what we did on tuesday which means i have to grab that package um and uh before i continue i should say this is an alternative drawing that people can do which does not require uh measuring 99 percent doesn't require measuring um so it's an alternative to this drawing which um we did on um, on Tuesday, which can be done at home by connecting two pages together and following the instructions as if we had been at school, right? Uh, so there is various instructions for all these distances where everything is, setting up the two cubes, uh, setting up the vanishing points, etc. Um, and when we did that. Um, we also said that the end result would be to create a line drawing of your two cubes um, opened up as if they were a building and uh, which will then use as a, uh, a basis for a final color version, final perspective color version. Um, so just again, reviewing that, um, there's also a PDF in iLearn. Um, that you can get that gives a bunch of instructions uh, and it's an annotated PDF. Um, and um, yeah, so according to that, you have to set up the drawing with specific dimensions. Um, and once you do that, you end up with a, uh, a wireframe that's basically your, your two cubes. Um, within inside which you can then build your uh, your design of your cube and you build your drawing and the process is that you try to do the whole thing without thinking too much how much you know what will be visible what's hidden um, in the sense that it's really hard to determine that if you try to do it immediately you know how this hides that other part etc so to not worry about that, we just do all the lines and then we use tracing paper to uh, figure it out. And then based on the tracing paper sketch, we do our final. Uh, then once we do that next week, we will use that as a basis for a quick black and white version rendering based again on Mike Lynn's um, Vilu's workshops. Uh, techniques. Um, and then if you have color pencils, we'll do a color version. Okay. So today's drawing might be just one. Again, for those who cannot do the whole thing, it might be just the one on the right, maybe just the one on the left. And it may not be exactly precise as the original instructions called for, but it will be something. Um, And this was the this was the construction using again the uh, you know details details instructions and the details me detailed measurements. So instead today we'll just we'll just try to focus either on one or the other and we'll do it freehand for the most part. So I hadn't actually done it myself until. Well, until a few days ago when I realized, well, how could we do this in a, in a quicker way? Um, so what I did was I quickly sketched, uh, remember that the left cube is seen, um, yeah, just a second, find my, yeah. the left cube is seen, um, with the so-called leading edge 
that's kind of in the middle, right? Whereas the right cube, we can see both sides of that cube. Here, we can only see one side and a little bit of the back. The other side, it's sort of from the outside. But because everything is open, um, well, to put it a different way, this cube we're seeing like this, whereas this cube um, we're seeing more, oops, like that. Okay, so today we'll just kind of focus, I'll focus on this one since go by since this morning I did this one and I'll combine the two recordings now the disadvantage of a small paper of course is that it, you're forced to put your vanishing points within that and therefore the, the proportions um, are a little more skewed and a little more distorted more like using a fisheye lens or a, or a, a wide angle lens but it can still be done um, and this would be the second one. Again, if my vanishing point was further out here, um, this distortion wouldn't be so big. It would be more open like our other drawing. Um, so I'll, I'll go over how to do this one, but let me show you what I did. At first, what I did was I did them both together, but freehand. So I took, um, I did a funny thing. I actually took uh, two sheets of paper like that, and I taped them like this lengthwise. But then I realized that I could have done just the other way, and it would have still fit. But because I thought I would get more room, I did it this way. So what I did was I built it up, again, without measuring. I just sort of eyeballed my uh, vanishing points and also my verticals and everything, trying to replicate um, what we did more precisely, okay? And I went through the whole construction, and I didn't do this in the video, I did this at home the other day. Once I finished, I took tracing paper to try to visualize, okay, what does it really look like, right? And it's tricky because again, you have to do a little bit of trial and error, but once you resolve it, then you can use this sketch by looking at that, I can I can do my final drawing exactly right, right? Because I know what to trace exactly. Uh, so it would be really hard to do this drawing uh, without using tracing paper. So I'm not going to do this today, but I just wanted to show you because if you wanted, you could do it actually as a as a complete drawing. But instead. Well, also because I actually did it this morning, but I stopped. I did it this morning and I stopped at this point just to show how I constructed it. Um, and perhaps maybe I'll, maybe I'll repeat this just in case you want to do it as a, as a double drawing. Um, then I went on and I did just, just the one on the right. And that's why today I'm going to do the one on the left. Um, so again, I did my little drawing here that showed my my little storyboard because I needed that to wrap around and do my um, my design, right? Which would be your design, of course, uh, your cube, All right? So why don't I do this? I will I will quickly. I repeat these, but I won't do any details. I'll just get the wireframe again without any any measurements, okay? And then I'll do a separate one of just this left one. So let's see. I'm going to use a soft pencil so that it's nice and nice and clear. Just adjust the video here. Make sure I'm in focus. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Um, um, you should have a 15 inch ruler, right? 
I think you do from your kit. Um, so this is a little bit longer. Uh, good, for a moment I thought we were in recording. Um, yeah, so I'll, remember this is a, a low horizon line. So just to, just to kind of, let's say a word about that just very quickly. So, um, you may be drawing, this is the horizon line, right? And these are my two vanishing points. Um, so what happens here is that if I assume my people to be, you know, so tall, um, perhaps this is, I don't know, a 20 feet tall building, right? And I could make another one that's even more extreme um, by putting my people there, right? So you can, so this looks like a big building. Now, the horizon line is what kind of drives everything under normal circumstances. But if I turn this, um, it's interesting because then if I put the people here, then all of a sudden this object looks you know, much shorter, right? Because it's all relative to that horizon line. Um, so maybe this is just like a, a little one story thing or not even, right? Maybe it's just a little box. So that's important. And for our purposes, again, the, we're, we're lowering the horizon line so we can pretend that this is a big building, right? And in your cube, if you remember from the one point perspective, uh, we placed our person that high, right? That was our um, our vanishing point. So what I'm doing now is I'm I'm coming down in my drawing fairly low. Okay. So let me just I'm gonna go a little fast. Um, I'll just say okay, that's my my vanishing point on the left. And on the right, not yet. So I'll just. Let's see. So even though I'm going to be doing this freehand in a sense, right, because I'm not measuring, you'll see that the principles apply anyway, and things will have to follow certain constraints, no matter what. Um, so now I'm just eyeballing. Oh, the other thing is, if you do this freehand, try to stay as straight as possible with this, right? So that it stays vertical. Um, you could use a triangle, you know, with another triangle here, but that to get your straight lines, but that kind of defeats the purpose of being fast, right? So it's a kind of, yeah, just don't worry about it being perfect, but at the same time, try to, try to get it more or less vertical. Um, so we know that the other vanishing point is kind of much closer here, right? So I'm just going to, I'm just going to make it there. Call it a day. All right. Now I want to try to make a cube. This will be my first cube, right? So this will be this cube right here, right? I'm going to call it one and this is view one and view two. Um, so you can just sort of eyeball it and say, okay, perhaps it's like this. And perhaps here it's, I don't know. Okay, let's assume that that's a cube. Um, I'm just gonna darken it a little bit. As soon as I do the outer edges here, I can do the back too, because I can cross over from these spots and these two spots right here, right? Um, 
so top and bottom. Um, and if I do this right, um, let's see here. What happens now is that these two points are going to give me the back corner right behind. And if I do it about right, it, this should align. And, you know, of course, you can fudge a little bit, but I did a pretty good job. They actually do match. Um, so that's my, that's the back. Oh, by the way, I'm drawing now, yeah, on the large format. So you would have to tape together two pieces of paper in order to do it um, like this, right? Does it look like a cube? I think so, more or less. Um, the second one, um, if I wanted to try to match this view where I have very little, I see a little bit on the right side, but I, and I see quite a bit on the left side. So you can do a little bit of trial and error, but because they're aligned here, if I went with my line this way it would be kind of smack in the middle. So I want to do it a little bit less here, right? I want to be more like that. So let me try that and see, see what happens. Um, um, at the same time, I want to try to have a cube that's about the same size right here. So I don't know, we'll just, we'll just have to see what happens. Um, now this position, is actually going through the center of the other cube, right? So in order to draw this line, I have to find the center of this other first cube. So I'm going to do a diagonal for that on the ground, right? Remember, if I do my two diagonals, I get the middle point and then I can draw that line. Right? So basically now, I've done this and I've, I've and I've found that spot right there. And you can see it's extreme, right? The, the distortion, but that's okay. So if I draw a line through that, I get my, my the front of my, um, of my cube. It's a lot, but I'm just gonna say, hey, that's how I did it and that's how it's gonna be. So, And it's quite small, I must say, because if that's the front, this cube, this poor cube is really, really tiny. So how come it's so tiny? Um, yeah, it's a little too tiny. I'm gonna, I'm gonna extend my, yeah, because it's freehand like this, I can control everything. So I'm going to, um, I'm just going to extend it. So it doesn't look so much smaller. Um, okay. So I just did this spot right here. Right here. And now I just do my verticals like I did before. And uh, let's see if I stop right there. Something is funny, right? This doesn't look like a square. So why is that? Because um, because I need to extend it further. Yeah, it just doesn't quite it doesn't quite work um, in the way I set it up. So sorry, folks. I'm gonna just extend it even further, even though the view again is going to be. So let's say. Right here. Yeah. What it probably meant was that I was so far out to this edge here. So now I've done the front of my second cube, and I can just finish it by going to that vanishing point again. 
And the trick now is finding the, the back. Um, I believe we can find it by using diagonals again, but if we're not sure, I think we can just meaning this way. If I draw a diag because diagonals are parallel lines, they're gonna converge all in the same spot. So if I know this is a diagonal, which was the diagonal of the big square here. If I move then across here, this line should hit that spot. So I can, I can kind of guess it by doing that. And it gives me a really tiny spot. So I'll, I'll fudge a little bit. I'll make it, I'll make it further out there. So of course, you know, with doing a freehand like this, it's got to be a little more flexible, right? So we, we will not be too strict. Um, So once again, you could do this entire drawing like this if you want it freehand, um, or not, or you could just do one. But I just wanted to draw it because Okay. And I guess I'm pretending that these, these facades are open so one can look inside here. Um, So yeah, use your judgment. If you look like if it looks like they don't look like cubes, well, maybe we can, you know, you can move things around a little bit um, because I'm basically repeating uh, what we just did earlier there, right? So again, horizon line. Make sure you make a nice cross in your vanishing point because it's um, it's a lot easier to find. Um, so what looks like a square, I don't know, maybe this. And So a nice crossing for my Okay, so now I have to try to pretend I can figure out what a cube looks like. Oh, that maybe looks I don't know, a little long. I don't know. I'll, I'll just call it good, okay? So I just I think it's too much. <laughs> Sorry, I keep changing my mind here, but let's do it a little bit less. I will realize I will need my little I need my little design eventually here. So I'm gonna do this view, the the view from the, the left cube, right? So I'll just I'll just quickly draw my my design here. This is really, really important, right? Because it, it always brings us back to where we get lost. And I get lost often. Um, I 
Okay. There we go. I'm going to have that as a reference. Um, okay, so let's finish this wireframe. And I did something funny because this doesn't quite. Oh, right, I haven't done my this line yet. This is the old one. The new one is here. Yeah. So now again, these two points should match in terms of being on the same vertical and they do more or less. Okay. Okay, now we can proceed. So again, I'm gonna do this, this, um, this corner right here. And um, yeah, the, the back square here doesn't look as squarish as the front one, but um, So again, this is one point perspective and not not three, which would be more like this kind of perspective where you have, um, you know, perhaps a building that looks like it's vanishing upward, right? When you look up, we're just gonna keep this straight. And also we're gonna keep this without distortion. So in reality, if I'm down here and I'm looking up, things up here would appear smaller, right? So if I have a grid, this little square might look smaller up here than this square down below. But for the purposes of this drawing, I'll just keep it the same. It just makes things a lot easier. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll quickly draw four divisions for this segment, right? I'll, I'll split this up into four. Let's see if I'm lucky with my inches. Uh, nope, five and a half, that's too hard. I'm gonna use centimeters, a lot easier. So it's well, a little easier, but not that easier. Uh, maybe this one is easier. Yeah, this one is easier. So I'll measure seven inches, seven centimeters here. So I can split it into half, three and a half. And that's one and a half plus two and a half millimeters. So, Right there. So I just I just split my height into um, into four. By the way, a quick way to um, to find divisions is to do this. Um, you can take a piece of paper, then you can split it. You can fold it in half, and you get your division. And you can fold that in half, and you get your other division right there. So even if you didn't have a um, a ruler, let's say you are on a desert island, or even maybe treasure island, you can take a page from that book and fold it in half and then in half again and you get this. Um, so I have a square and now I'm going to draw all these lines because I just divided it up like that on the left side. I'm going to do these a little bit lighter, these lines, because it's going to be pretty messy pretty soon here. And once I do that, remember that uh, the principle that I could draw then a diagonal to get my vertical divisions it's gonna allow me to draw this guy in perspective in the same, in the proper way. So once I have um, these vanishing lines, when I draw a diagonal, I get my other divisions in a nice progressive way, right? So I'll do that, I'll draw a diagonal. And now I'm gonna go kind of quickly and forward and I'll get all these divisions 
um, so that I can do it fast and get to the actual design. Right. The main thing is that they get progressively bigger. Um, I'm going to do fairly big dots. And it's neat how perceptually our eye can immediately visualize now this plane kind of popping up, right? Um, so I'll now go around. The easiest way is not to just keep going around because now I found my divisions, which were harder to find earlier there. Now I just keep going this way, right? I just did this part, I'm gonna go around on the right side. And now I'm really going to try to speed up. Um, somebody said I should do these videos and then use a time lapse, but I don't like that. That's funny. I can instead just try to do that fast on my own. Um, just have to keep track of where everything is. And you can help yourselves if you're not sure if this is straight um um you know just use re other reference lines to see if you can keep it straight plum i mean you know vertical highlight that Now I'm going to go to this one behind um, on the spots I found on the right. Another diagonal. And I have to go from here. So it is kind of fun to do this without having to worry about the measurements, right? Um, and even though this back side doesn't look really that square, it's okay. Now, after a while, you'll be confused, right? And you'll know where the heck are all my, let's see. Yeah. This, this, the, the proportions of these guys are a little funny, but all right, let's do the final one on the left here. And one more diagonal. Is my grid right there? Not to be careful. <laughs> um, I can be right. Okay, hold on a second here. Make sure. Okay. Okay, it's a little fuzzy there, but we'll get there in a moment. Um, okay. I sharpen my pencil a little bit more.
Okay. Um, all right. So now that I have all these points, I'm going to um, draw my pattern going around. And I'm going to do that with a different color. Okay. I'm going to use red. Um, so I just followed the pattern, right? I'll start here on the left side. Um, but I will zoom out a little bit because it's a little too close. Give me a second. Yeah, that looks a little. Better. Okay. All right. Yeah. So let's do that. Let's do that pattern. Again, I'm going to move fast. Um, so I kind of know this pattern now by heart because I've been doing it so many times. Um, but it's, it's still possible to make mistakes, right? So, but, so I have to go, I, again, I'll do this battleship kind of technique. So I go one across, one across and two down, one across and two down, it's there. Um, one across and one up. Right there. Then I keep going the up, you know, right here, one across and one down, one across and one down. One across and two up. So one across and two up there. And then two across and one down, two across and one down, two across and one down right there. Um, now you could use that technique of the tracing paper, but I think if you're try to behave like a little ant and then again, keep doing this um, bottle ship kind of movement. Now I can say, okay, two across and one down in the back, which would be two across and one down here. Yeah. I'm gonna fudge a little bit because it looks a little too far. And then two across and one down. Now one across and, and two up, one across and two up there. And, but you can start seeing a little bit of a symmetry here, right? Right. So you can see these lines are probably related. Uh, that's in the back, that's in the front. They're the same length, but because of perspective, they're proportionally different. Um, and now we're here and I go down one. Wait, did I do it right? Uh, yes, that's my corner, so down there. Okay, so now I'm in this corner, I go up one and across one. There, down two and across one, down two and across one. Is it right? Yes. And then two across and one up, two across and one up. One and two, yep. Yeah. So that's my pattern. Um, the next thing we need to do is the center of the cube. Um, and I'm gonna use a, a different color. Different color, maybe blue. Yeah, so we use this technique where we just simply um, 
in any cube, right? We just draw opposite diagonals from opposite corners. Make sure you don't do corners of squares, rather corners of the cube. Uh, so in this case, I can connect perhaps, if you take the long diagonals, it's even better because you get a more precise. So I'm gonna connect this spot to that spot uh, as far as possible away from each other. A little light there. And now I can do perhaps these other two, or maybe even this and this. Um, whichever you take, it doesn't really matter, right? So let's see. No, I don't like so much. That's, oh no, here it is. That's right. No, that's good. I like it a lot actually because because it's in a nice spot that's away from all the other lines. Okay. And like I said before, now the trick is to not worry about anything. Just connect every single dot to the, to the middle of the cube. The only exception, because my cube, or rather the student's cube had the situation that one of the lines, so it's going to be a little bit out of focus, but one of the lines um, was part, you know, was joining these two, sorry, these two triangles right here. So I know that's a, that's a one big surface, right, right here. Um, so I know that actually I need to skip that line. We need to skip that line. Um, I could draw it and then erase it later, but since I know it's not there because this is one single surface, in my design, that's this spot, okay? This spot right here. So what I'll do, that spot is this one. So I'm gonna skip the line that connects, uh, I can see there's a problem, let's see. Yeah, I can see the line, I'm gonna skip the line that, that's in the middle. I should have a point in the middle there, but somehow I don't. Oh, here it is. Okay, my center is not in the right spot. I can see it already, because if this line connects to that, it's not hitting it. Um, let me double check, okay. Did something wrong because either I did something wrong, my, my center looks okay. And some of the lines connect properly, opposite spots. But why this one does not connect to this? Hmm. Oh, I know, it's not supposed to go there. That's not the opposite corner than that, right? That's okay, now, okay, good. <laughs> I feel better, I'm not supposed to connect. If I'm not gonna connect it, but if I were connecting it, it doesn't connect from here to here. That's, that's on the same surface it would connect to here. So that's, that's the line that I'm skipping. Okay, good, I feel better, okay. <laughs> Um, all right, so I'm going to do all the lines minus that line, which again, I know I don't need, okay? So everything else, I just connect because, and you can see that they go through the center and even amazingly, even in a drawing like this done kind of on the fly, you can see that things somehow behave um, according to certain geometric Except I'm supposed to do blue lines. Okay. <laughs> Getting all my colors mixed up. Luckily, blue is darker, so I can just go on top. This is the other one. I'm just going to go around so. That's the one line I don't need. So that one I did, this one I did, this one I haven't done yet, right here. Okay. 
And then I keep going around and this one, where does it go? Um, Yeah, this is the only one that's a little bit, a little bit off. Um, meaning that this spot should have been a little higher here. And then my, my blue line would connect to it like that. Okay, I think now I've done them all again, except this one. So now with the piece of tracing paper, I would try to visualize what it might look like. And again, if you had the cube, it would be helpful, right? Because you could see, you could see what things are in front, what things are in the back. Um, the nice thing about tracing paper is you can quickly make, you can start with the part that is in the forefront, right? Right, we kind of know that that's there at the, very, at the very front. So once I draw that first part, I can then connect whatever I see to the center and kind of start going by elimination. Like that. Then, because everything goes to the center, this probably will stop there. This other thing will probably stop there. And then I just keep going. Now I start going, you know, to the next planes as they go around. And because I remember that I have these shapes, which are like rhombuses, this complete shape, kind of remember that that's probably how it's going to end. And then the last bit is like that guy right there. And then that's my corner. So now it is true that by now I know this cube kind of in and out, but um, so that's, that's the perspective. Um, one thing I didn't do was the floor. So I'll, um, I'll quickly draw the floor. You're going to need that as well. And again, I can just do my, my divisions there, bring them across. Then using the diagonal. One, two, and three. Oops. Actually, I missed it there. Sorry. Lots of lines. I should have made a bigger dot right there. So that's our environment. Um, so I could I could finish this now just to have as a as a little I mean I know I know the floor is, is what it is right that wouldn't be hard to do it 
without doing the tracing first, but just because. And then the horizon line is nicely a little bit lower than these spots, so I can put I can put my people there. One person right there in the corner. Whatever you do, don't put your person there, right? I mean, that would be possible, but it would be on the outside behind behind this wall, right? Uh, unless it's like stuck with Velcro onto the wall, uh, which would have to be a little kid in that case. Um, okay, so this is the process, right? So now once I have that as my reference, I can easily trace this um, with my, um, so five more minutes and then this will be, will be finished. Um, Right, because I know now what to look for. I can, I can easily um, draw my drawing because I'm basically copying it. Right. You just have to kind of keep track of where everything is. and your drawing will look uh, perfect. Uh, as soon as I, as soon as I finish this, I'll show you a little trick too. That's kind of neat. Um, There's not much that one can see of some of the shapes, but that's just, that's just the way it is, unfortunately, or fortunately, I don't know. And then we have to add the, the walls. And the floor. Last one. Okay. So the idea is that it would have been really hard for me to, from this, to do this, um, try, especially if, oops, this actually should be touching there, but, um, they should be the same spot there with the line, um, because it would have, it was hard to visualize. So, but because I did a kind of trial and error with the top sketch, so it's, it's a lot easier than just copying this one, right? So, when you do your again your horizon line, just make sure your your characters are all again hanging from the from the line, unless they're kids, right? In which case they'll be uh, shorter, but you see they can be pretty far, and they all look um, they all look right. Uh, what did I want to show you? Yes, one last thing was that it's it's neat how uh, shapes on your cube. Let's say this this big shape and this big shape. Um, they are the same shape, right? They're the same, exactly the same size or perhaps you know maybe this triangle and this triangle right these are all part of the same uh, plane actually um, are duplicated in our Q 
cube in perspective. And one way to uh, visualize those is actually what I call my T fighter uh, from Star Wars uh, technique, because you can actually isolate, they're kind of like butterflies. Right, so that's bigger because it's in the front. This is smaller because it's in the back. And you can do this with um, any pair of triangles. Let me see. No, I don't want to. Was another one, yeah. Another another pair is this one. I thought there are others. <laughs> I think it's see. It's hard because some lines are blue and some lines are red. But um, oh yeah, another one is this. Okay, so these represent your, your, you know, all your little triangles on your cube on the same plane. Uh, so that's kind of a fun little exercise. Okay, so this could be the basis then for your color version on uh, next week. Okay, so either this one or the one on the right or both of them. Um, 